I think the news got delivered to me by one of them, I think two weeks later. Did they call you or did they like... They called me in. So okay, I okay. saw um, one of them face to face and then she told me. And then, yeah, right after I just like went to my car and I just bawled my eyes out. Oh God. <laughs> I'm Jean Danker, very excited today because we've got Asia's fastest woman. She is Singapore's pride and joy. Let's say hello to Shanti Pereira. Everybody make some noise. Woo! <laughs> I'm so enthusiastic. I'm so excited that you're here. Shanti, welcome. Oh, gosh, thank you. I wish I had a cheerleading crew right now. I, I mean, like, I was like looking at the crew, like, can the crew make some noise? Come on, let's come on. Shanti Woo! Pereira, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to join us. I of know course, your schedule course, is mad course. crazy busy. No, happy to be here, really. Now, we we'll also have our lovely Catherine Ko here, who is our psychologist. And she's going to be helping us, you know, sort of give us some mental health and wellness tips today. Welcome, Catherine. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here. And we're looking forward to, you know, you giving us some helpful tips today, yeah. okay? Um, so let's start with you, Shanti. You know, every time I do like sports news on my radio show, Cartoons, it's like Shanti's broken this record Shanti's broken this that. I've, I've lost count to be really honest how many records you've broken this year it's been an amazing 2023 mm -hmm. yes. can you tell me how you're feeling about everything right now I'm just really thankful you know okay. for everything that has happened so far yeah. and all the opportunities that I've had this year to just run with some of the best in the continent and around the world. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm just... I mean, when you like, you know, just before you go off on, on these big competitions and all that, I mean, the pressure is, I, I, I would imagine, intense and immense. Is it more coming from the people around you or is it more from what you give yourself? I guess it's a bit of both, yeah. you know, like, you know that you've did all these kind of amazing results and so you want to keep that going yeah. but also there are tons of people just like congratulating you seeing what else they you know they can see from you and stuff yeah. like that so but I mean the fact that there is pressure is a good thing I guess do you like the pressure do you thrive on the pressure or I mean like I don't think anybody <laughs> likes pressure but I'm, I've just kind of accepted that it. it's just a part of the process okay you know, and it's just embracing it as much as I can mm. and it's something I can't really control yeah. I think it's really hard to be an athlete 24-7. You're kind of like in preparation all the time, like your nutrition and your um, lifestyle. You know, you can't keep too late nights. So, and mentally as well, I, and we were talking about this before we started rolling, mentally you kind of have to be really strong and have the good support system. Can you tell us how you deal with all that? Because I, I can't imagine it must be hard. Um... It is. <laughs> it is hard, but what I found to make it a lot easier is to thrive on like routines. Okay. And focus on like the process more than the outcome. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a lot of nods from her. I think this is like... She's, good. <laughs> She's like, I'm picking like, up on yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I do have to keep a pretty strict schedule on a daily basis because every decision I make ultimately contributes to my performance so wow. that means like what I eat you know I'm on a pretty high protein um, diet I don't really eat that much carbs so I have to make sure like what I'm eating is right for me mm. um, but of course I'm still human you know I yeah. still have my cheat days like that's just completely ask. fine I still have my chocolates and my sweets every great. now and then so great great yeah, I'm not, yeah, I, I'm human, la, like I said. So, <laughs> You're not a robot. Chanti's yeah. not a robot, okay? <laughs> yeah, but it's still something that I have to watch out for. Like, yeah. I can't have too much of it or anything like that. It's just a bit to satisfy the sweet craving that yeah. I have every now and then. Yeah. It's taking time out of the day to do all these things. Okay. And at the end of the day, you realise, like, it takes up your whole day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would imagine yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, like, you plan for all these. You have routines in the morning, routines in the afternoon, routines at night that... In the end, yeah, it's really a 24-7 thing. Yeah. yeah. So, like, what is a typical day like? Like, a typical uh, recovery day like for you? What, what's that like? Um, so, a typical day would be, I train twice. So, okay. I have one session in the morning. That would be, like, one and a half hours. Okay. And one session in the afternoon, which can go up to, like, four hours. That's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, what is, <laughs> do you just say four hours for it the second one? to four hours. Okay, it's, like, okay. between, like, two and a half to four hours. Okay. Depends on what I'm doing that day. Is this every day? I'm sorry. This is 
um, almost every day, but my recovery days are Wednesdays and Sundays. So right. all those mm. days are a bit more chill. I just go for like yoga and stuff. Right, okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, I just have my breakfast. I go for training. I have my lunch and then I try to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Great, you need yeah. it. You need it. Um, Actually, I'm so glad that you were just talking about your routine. I was just kind of listening out for, you know, stuff that you do to take care of yourself. And it seems like your self-care is part of your routine. It is. Yeah. I think it's really important. Like, yeah. I just need, I, as simple as it is, I need to find things that make me feel good, basically. And if it means, like, taking time out of the day to just go have coffee by myself, like, it's just something that I need, you yeah. know? And if it means I have to sacrifice something else to do that like i'm okay wow yeah i love it it's really cool important. right yeah <laughs> i love the point about napping i resonate yeah. very hard with that <laughs> napping is essential napping is great you oh should do it every gosh. day <laughs> and i mean i don't nap for long like i nap like i don't know 15 20 minutes it's but like a power it's just, nap yeah yeah, yeah. Right. and you're it's ready for I mean, like, yeah, session correct. Yeah. And out of everyone, I, I do think Shanti deserves that nap every day. I mean, come on. <laughs> Absolutely. We're all Thanks. just like sitting down and like, you know, banging on a computer. And I'm talking on the radio and I'm like, oh yeah, I need a nap. Actually, no, I don't need a nap. Shanti needs a nap. And let's give her a nap. My yeah. gosh. Let's talk about traveling because you have to travel for competitions mm. and stuff like that. Do yeah. you love it or do you hate it? I mean, it, it's not easy, I know. It's a love-hate relationship, <laughs> okay. I guess. Okay. Like traveling is fun. Like, the logistics part is the difficult thing. Okay. Like you have to think about what time your flight is, when you're gonna get there. Like if you're Doesn't gonna have Doesn't somebody enough. arrange this for you? I feel I feel like somebody I mean, should be like your manager <laughs> and go like Shanti just appear. We've got it. We've got I mean, it all I sorted. A, I don't have my own manager, but okay. I have a. I mean, my athletics association kind of arranges Helps all you. these kind of things. Like yeah. arrange my flights and everything. But I do get to choose which kind of like flight time and. Okay which area I want to stay in, which city. Uh, so that you kind still of have thing. to make those decisions. Yeah, I mean, okay. which I'm very happy to because I don't want them to book something I Correct. completely don't want. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, 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 And of I'm course. just going to be suffering the whole time. So <laughs> okay. yeah, there's a lot of like planning that goes into it, which is okay. a bit difficult, but yeah. it's just part of it, I guess. Is it an isolating experience? Do you find um, going off and doing so many competitions, uh, you know, because your friends are not with you or does your family travel with you so to give um, you some semblance of normalcy? So when I'm in Europe, I go by myself. Okay. But for competitions that are within Asia, so for the SEA Games, my parents were there. Yeah. My boyfriend was there too. Mm. And same for the Asian Championships last week. So okay. that's really nice. Yeah. But for the longer trips, yeah. I'm usually by myself. And it can get pretty lonely. <laughs> Tell us Not about gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about how well, like maybe if you can recall how how that lonely experience might be like and yeah, what that what Yeah, what that's I remember like. um I was in New Zealand. It was my first training stint of the year this year. And I was joining this like sprint group um there. And so it was just me and my coach, right? So yeah. I just like show up and then suddenly you feel like, whoa, like I'm the outsider, you oh, know? Oh, right. And they don't mean anything by it. Like, they're not trying to be mean. It's just like, it's just how it is, right? Like, yeah. a new person comes in, you chit-chat, you small talk, but it's not like yeah. you're part of the group Correct. yet. So that was a bit like, oh, uh, like I miss home a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit hard. But then, um, I'm honestly really glad that my coach is kind of like my best friend. <laughs> great. Yeah, so great. I have him through it all. I love what you said about your coach being your best friend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it's also about the uh, we're finding the quality of the relationship, mm -hmm. not so much the quantity. Yes, uh, so yeah. it doesn't matter if you have like a million friends on Facebook. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's really about having those close connections and people that you feel safe with. Yeah, um, and I guess having your coach there all the time just is yeah, it's so great. Nice. I mean, okay, I mean, my coach is still my coach, and you can you know <laughs> there's still uh, cracking the whip, some, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some things that you're just like, uh, but. <laughs> yeah. But you make do. He's like, it's like a right. dad. He's like my second dad, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you can kind of tell what a dad relationship is like yeah. sometimes. So, right. Yeah. But he's still, yeah, he's still a great person to hang out with. So, Shanti, how do you balance like the pressures of your performance when you're sprinting and then at the same time you want to, you know, keep your scholarships and that's in the back of your mind when you're like training and, and, and running, right? Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I feel like my answers always lead back to the same thing. <laughs> but because I was on it before and I understood the pressure that came with it, yeah, it's like a job, right? Like you're expected to succeed in like 
your various fields and stuff mm. like and they're giving you monetary monetary yes. like, benefits exactly in exchange so it's exactly the same thing now it's easy to focus on the negatives like um the pressure points people watching you and um expected to deliver results all the time it's very easy to think about it but what i try to do is i just look at it in a different perspective and just focus again on the things that i can control yeah all those things i cannot control and again it comes to the territory like it's just how it works you know you're part of this scholarship and that's just what people do yeah so you can't help it lah You know, it's really great when you perform wonderfully at competitions, but when things don't go as planned, right? I want to find out what your headspace is like and how you get out of those situations because I know it, it's possibly very hard. Yeah, I mean, last time, like maybe, I don't know, the past six years or something, um, not this year, uh, it takes me really, really long to come out of a bad race or a, even a bad training session, yeah. honestly. Like, I would oh. just dwell on it so much and I would think like, oh my God, like, this just means I'm not good really. Oh you know, no. like, yeah, it, it was it was horrible. La. Like, it took me really long to get out of that space. Okay. Um, but then, I guess, being overseas and seeing how other athletes train, I mean, social media is great also because you can kind of see like, mm. Um, what other athletes are doing. Yeah. And I kind of realized that it's not just me that has bad days. Lah. Like, it's all of us, you know. And even world champions, like, they suddenly, they win gold at one competition and the next they're, like, doing really badly. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like, it sucks to see. Right. But it happens to everyone. Mm. And, like, there's really nothing much you can do about what's happened in the past already. Right. So now this year, um, I've had a few bad races, like, um, I don't know, just, just things that didn't go as planned. Okay. But then I'm just like, okay lah, never mind. You know, that's really, like, it's that's good. something I can't control really because it happened. Okay. Like all I can do is listen to my coach's feedback and yeah. just see which parts I can improve on and then do it again yeah. another time. Like. Yeah. Do you physically do something to get yourself out of that funk? Because, or you tell yourself something or you listen to something. Is there like a, some people have that bit of like a trigger of like, okay, if I, I'm just going to get myself out of it. I'm going to listen to this song and then I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll get over it in three minutes once the song is over. Not really. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people that do that. They like limit yeah. the time. Like they put a timer or that yeah, kind of thing. But yeah. I don't do that. I think I just like, I really feel it. <laughs> like oh, I want okay. to feel it and I want to like acknowledge the fact that I'm upset because I'm allowed to be upset. Okay. I just want to film that. That's so um, good. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> really so good. good, Shanti. I love this God. like knots I'm getting right I know. It's great. <laughs> you're great. It's just like you're doing everything. You know? yeah. She's sticking all the boxes. She is. I mean, I worked with psychologists a lot. Yeah. I see. yeah okay. So they really yeah. helped me like get to where I am today, yeah. especially with the part about like um, focusing on what I can control. It's a really big thing that clicked like recently, but it took years of like constantly trying to work on the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I think just like, I love what you said about, you know, just feeling it. Uh, it's totally okay to be in a funk. Everybody goes into a funk, yeah, right? Exactly. It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to have multiple bad days. Um, as long as, you know, uh, you kind of know your triggers, you know how to kind of get out of that as well. Um, but I am fully in agreement. Just feel it. I want to talk about like, the toughest time in your career so far. Um, I know that in 2018, it was a pretty difficult time. You had a bit of an injury and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Can you take us through that time? Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so from yeah 2018 right up to like early 2022, it was really hard time for me because in 2018, I was on the Sports Excellence Scholarship. Okay. Um, I was on it from 2016. But my um, goal for that scholarship was to potentially medal at that Asian Games in 2018. Okay. Yeah, but in the start of 2018, I got pretty badly injured. Um, And it was a grade two hamstring strain. So it meant that probably like a month out of training, like intensely. Okay. So that already puts a huge like, hole into my progress right mm. but then when I got back onto the track and sprinted then I injured it again oh, man. <laughs> so yeah the minute it happened it was during training I was just like nah like 
it's not gonna happen really for me this year like i mean i'll try my best to get back in shape but i didn't have enough time okay. to do it it was like just less than two months before the asian games and like there's just not enough time to prep. right yeah yeah so then i went i still managed to go because i'm part of the relay team so i went but it was just horrible performances like just very very far from my best okay yeah and then because i didn't hit my goal i lost the scholarship oh, God. yeah <laughs> so oh, it was just a very painful time mm. for me and then i was also um i was in smu at yeah. the time i was year two i think and because i have a minimum gpa to keep up oh i see and i couldn't hit it so oh. i lost that scholarship also and it both happened like a week after each other oh my god <laughs> ouch yeah, so okay. it was crazy la. like it was one of the hardest things i had to go through yeah um just to find that confidence again mm, mm. um yeah so yeah it was just hard and then later on like when i graduated from uni i kind of had like an identity crisis right. situation because okay. i didn't want to do what i pursued like, and there was accountancy, was, was accountancy, it? Yeah, okay. so I realised I just, it's just not my thing. Like, yeah. It's difficult, <laughs> you know? It's tough. It's tough. Mean, so yeah. it just wasn't my thing. So um, there was that. And then I was just kind of going through a... I wasn't doing well in track also. Okay. So then I was just spiralling, you know, like, oh, if I don't know what I want to do with my life and I'm not a spring queen anymore, then like, who am I? So Shanti, you're talking about all these tough moments during that 2018 time and then the scholarships and all that um take us through how that went down for you like you know was it like a phone call that you got or an email that you got like that process what yeah. happened um so for the sports one i had to come in for like a review session first and then we just kind of talked to the administrators about my progress and everything that happened yeah and then they said that they would inform me later of whether i'm still going to be continuing right. in, the, in the scholarship program and then i think the news got delivered to me by one of them i think two weeks later yeah so <laughs> did they call you or did they like they called me in so okay, i okay. saw um, one of them face to face and then she told me and then yeah right after i just like went to my car and i just bought my eyes out God. <laughs> yeah i just i had to run from like the room because it was like tears were coming out already then i was in yeah i was in bali with my friend for a week and then around that time was when we got get our uni results right so i saw my results and i saw the gpa wasn't didn't hit the requirement so i was like okay i have to deal with this when i go back home yeah and that was like five days later then i got food poisoning in bali oh, <laughs> oh bali belly you know bali belly that's <laughs> right so yeah i mean but oh. yeah i mean it was fine I, I recovered pretty fast um and then i got back to singapore and then i had to go see the dean of student affairs or something like that with my parents right. and then that's where they brought the news to me that i will oh. no longer be on a scholarship with SMU anymore. Oh god. So then again, like came out and then my parents and I went to the car and I just cried. Yeah. You know? So it was just it was bad. I think that trumps the twenty eighteen thing. Right. <laughs> like, okay. It was a really bad time because I would show up to training, I never want to be there. And like I will hop on the bad training sessions. Right. Okay. And I'll bring that with me to competitions and like I put so much pressure on it that it just doesn't turn out yeah well you know yeah. because i'm like i'm just so tense mm. all the time yeah so in comparison to all that you were feeling during that time that difficult time and then now you kind of like mm -hmm, hey hey <laughs> i'm doing it um how do you do you feel like i don't know vindicated do you feel like i'm glad i stuck it out yeah i guess like i've just been kind of embracing every single opportunity that has come my way this year and just being thankful that I get to go, I, I joined the scholarship program again, mm -hmm. the sports scholarship. And with my coach now, we plan the season in a way where it's going to benefit me as much as possible. Yep. Travel overseas, train with people overseas and compete with them as well. So yeah, I've just been kind of embracing it. And when I think about everything that's happened, it was awful, but 
all of it has contributed to my experiences that I've picked up on along the years, yeah. over the years. So as bad as it was, I don't regret it. Mm. Yeah. So. Are you saying that you would experience it all over again? I mean, yeah. like, of course like, <laughs> not. But at least now I know better how okay. to deal with things. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it's a bit of a, you know, sigh of relief. I mean, just in comparison, like you've come a long way and, you know, it's so nice to see the fruits of your labor sort of like being shown to the world yeah, now, right? Course. I mean, I don't really call it a relief because I'm not at the end of my career yet. Exactly. And I know that there's bound to be tough times ahead. So okay. I'm just happy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't awesome. really know how else to describe it. I'm just glad, I'm happy with where I am. Okay. And I'm very thankful and grateful for that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not everyone can sort of sit back and go, I am happy. I think that's, you know, three words. Did you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with whatever is happening right now, whatever, wherever I am Just kind of really living in the moment, I guess. Yeah. Embracing that, the, again, <laughs> the <laughs> normal <laughs> box. She just ticked another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, help with psychology, like my psychologist, yeah. like they helped me with that. Most of the comments that come is like, um, you're flat. You're mm. too. You're too skinny in this video. You're too. Suddenly, the next video, you're too fat. You have gained weight.